you've been gifted in business and what you do succeeds. And I think it's interesting to see that 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 rogue pioneering apostolic heart was there in, in your youth and your love for money was just has now been redeemed of like, you don't love it as as if it gives you identity and purpose, but but you know how to make it, you're drawn to it, and now you're leveraging it to change and transform people's lives. Yeah, it's a tool that can be used for great good or great bad. It's really up to us to choose, right? And I think, how do you break an addiction to greed? You break it with generosity. Welcome to the Darren Early Wine Podcast, where we awaken you to become who you were born to be. Here's your host, Darren Early Wine. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's good to have you here on the Darren Early Wine Podcast uh, once again. This is the at home edition. If you're watching here on YouTube, you say, this is not the record of the studio. Uh, you're right at home here in my home studio, changing things up here a little bit this week. And we'll be back in the studio next week. But uh, excited about this week's episode. Um, I truly believe that, um, I believe this with every episode, but I really do uh, have a conviction that this week's episode is going to be life changing for many of you out there. And uh, we're going to jump into that and talk about the idea of, is there actually a, a, a thing called redemptive capitalism? Uh, we don't talk a lot about, you know, capitalism or socialism or any of the isms necessarily here on the Darren Lewin Wine podcast, because uh, our goal each week is to awaken you to become who you were born to be. And, um, and so it's not a lot about uh, the isms. It's a lot about who God has created you to be and how you step into that. Uh, but today we're sitting down with uh, a friend of mine, um, Ethan Fernhaber. And Ethan um, is a unique bro to say the least. And he is going to drop some stuff on you guys in this episode that uh, is going to be life changing. And uh, I can't wait to get into it. I don't want to talk too much on the front end of this episode because I want to get you to his interview and some of the stuff that he talks about. And they're not concepts for Ethan. He's not giving you some stuff he read in a book. He's not giving you some stuff he got from his economics course in college. He's talking to you from his life and how he runs his company. And it is truly a, a, a story of redemptive capitalism. And I think right now in our society, guys, right now, there's definitely a narrative that capitalism is of the devil, that money is bad, that rich people are terrible, that, that uh, rich people, all they do and, and corporations, all they do is oppress people and they're terrible. And we need to tear them down. And personally, I don't think that's true at all. I think that's a, a gross oversimplification uh, and it's attacking greed which is great to attack, but it's, it's equating greed with possession. It's equating greed with rich people. It's equating greed with a company. Now, can rich people be greedy? Yes. Can companies uh, uh, oppress and, and, and hurt their workers and not take care of them? Yes. All these things are possible, but I think what's happening is in many ways, we're, we're throwing the baby out with the bathwater and we're missing the opportunity that I think true, creative, redemptive capitalism gives us the opportunity to create the future that's currently on the heart and the mind of God. Because here's the deal, and Ethan's going to unpack this because Ethan, he is a, a rogue bee. We've talked about that. He's an apostolic pioneering leader. He has been his whole life. And he talks about how early in life, he loved money that he had a, a love affair with money. He talks about in the very first of how when he was a kid, he, he, remember get, he, he remembers getting 50 bucks and going and getting 50 singles and then going home and ironing them so they would be like pressed in like crisp $1 bills. He loved money, but he said this. He said, he said, how do you break an addiction? How do you break an addiction to greed? One word, generosity. And Ethan has understood that process and he has been able to, to implement that into every area of his life. And it's so, so life-giving. I'm so excited for you guys to get into it because here's the deal, guys. Greed has actually has nothing to do with possessions, but it has everything to do with posture. And by posture, I mean the posture of the heart. Greed has nothing to do with possessions. It has everything to do with posture. Because here's the deal. We like to believe that the people that are rich, well, they're greedy. That that's a fallacy because the poorest person on your street can be the most greedy person on your block because it doesn't matter if you have $400,000 or you have $14,000. The issue is your heart and how you see money. It's not about how much money you have. It's about how much money has you. 
And that's what Ethan's going to get into, because when you look at, at the biblical narrative of, of what we're called into and what God has created us to be as his intimate allies, as John Eldridge says, we're partnering with him to create the future that's on his mind and, and on his heart. And that's what Jesus tells us to pray, right? He prays us that it asks us to, to pray that God would would actually allow us to see his kingdom come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That we're seeing God's kingdom come to earth. And, and, and if you look at God's connection to humanity from the beginning of the Bible, when God came into relationship with Abraham, right? He said, you are going to be, you're going to be blessed, right? I'm going to bless you so you can be a blessing. You're blessed to be a blessing. He didn't say, hey, I'm not going to give you anything because I'm afraid you'll get greedy. You know what? Uh, my, my plan is for you to be poor and under-resourced for your entire existence. Because if, if everybody has just nothing, then everything will be fair. And that'll be, that's the great way that I've, that I've decided to run the, the world. No, God said, here's the deal. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you abundantly so that blessing can flow through you. So you can be a conduit for blessing. And I think that's something we got to get our mind around is that having wealth and having the capacity to create wealth is not evil. It's actually an amazing gift from God because God has equipped some of us, some of us, some of you are equipped by God uniquely to create wealth, to create jobs, to create companies, to create uh, resources, to create industries so that you can bless others, so that God's blessing and, and actual solutions to actually bring redemption to generational sin and oppression can come through your redemptive, creative, capitalistic mind. I really believe that. That you're blessed to become a blessing. Here's I want to jump in the interview, but I just want to say this. Today, I want to talk specifically to some of the apostle and pioneer uh, listeners that we have. In spiritual DNA, we take it through understanding your, your voice in God's kingdom, your five-fold ministry calling or vocation, your voice. It comes from Ephesians chapter four, and it breaks down like this. There's apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, and teachers. One other word we could throw in there that's a little more of a, a real word context, right, would be an apostle, would be a pioneer or an entrepreneur. A prophet would be a creative. An evangelist would be a connector. And uh, a shepherd would be a nurturer. And a teacher would be a guardian. And I don't want, I don't want you to tune out if you're not an apostle uh, pioneer, but I want to talk specifically today to apostle pioneers because here's the deal. I don't believe it was an accident that you're listening to the podcast today. I don't care if you listen to this two years after it's released. I believe that, that there is a problem in our world or there's a problem in your city, in your community, in your school system, in your business, wherever. There is a problem right now on this earth that God has created you uniquely to solve it. You have been given gifts and abilities and creativity and, and, and talents and, and, and ideas that God has specifically given to you to solve a current problem that our world is facing. And I believe you're listening to today's podcast, and it's going to be a watershed moment that some of the things that Ethan is going to say, that God is going to speak to you through Ethan's words, and it's going to awaken something in you to step in to become who you were born to be and create the future. And it's a future of reconciliation. It's a future of redemption. It's a, it's a future of resources being spread and given to lift people up. And Ethan is going to take you on that journey. And I want to jump into it. He's going to just drop some guys, some stuff. And he talks about, uh, Ethan's a phenomenal businessman. He has over 108 employees. He runs uh, um, uh, basically apartment complexes and condo uh, complexes all over Indiana. He has over 10,000 people living under his roofs. And his vision and, and, and what he's doing is, is absolutely um, transformational. And the way he is using and creating actual, creating uh, economic models to actually help people, creating generational blessings for other families from the blessings and the wealth that God is bringing them, using the wealth and, and, and privilege that God has given him to actually share wealth and privilege with others. It's a beautiful model. You're going to love this interview. When we come back, um, I just want to talk about... Um, what God is saying to you and what you're going to do about it. Because I know there are problems in your city and in our world that need to be solved. And it needs to be the people of God, the people that are connected with the very heart and the very mind of Jesus that move forward. 
and actually make a difference, that don't allow greed to be something that holds them back, that don't allow the, the, the narrative that's coming through, through our world to tell you what is good and bad, but it'll actually allow the word of God and the spirit of God to bring you to life, to inspire you and to give you creative ideas Right? We talked about that in episode, last week's episode. The creativity is going to be the natural result of spirituality and that God can actually begin to bring creative ideas to see you help solve problems, to actually erase and bring healing to generational sins that have been brought through our country and around the world. God is creating a future that is on his mind and on his heart and is looking for people like you, apostolic and pioneering leaders, that are willing to lean into generosity, that are willing to, that are willing to lean into creativity and see that uh, redemptive uh, creativity and redemptive capitalism change the world. Let's jump into the interview right now with Ethan Fernharbor. I love it. You're going to love it. Uh, it's going to inspire you. Let's jump in right now. Hey, excited to sit down with my good friend, Ethan Fernharbor. And uh, Ethan, we have known each other for a handful of years now. We met yeah. at Mercy Road Church. Uh, where I get a chance to be a part of uh, the teaching team there. And I've wanted to have you on the podcast for a while because I'm so excited for people to hear just kind of the development of your life and your mission. You are uh, you're the president of Renewing Management. You are also, I mean, is, are you president of Multiply Indiana as well? Yeah, they kind of forced me into that role. <laughs> <laughs> so you're doing multiple and we'll unpack what that uh, that mission uh, but but reaching people through church planning through all over Indiana and then you've just stepped into a new venture that I want us to talk about and so you're an apostolic pioneering type of leader and and uh, you have from the moment I met you you have inspired me like crazy because you um, you have an ability and I don't know if it's an ability or if it's just a uh, you've made the tenacious decision that it's like, you're just going to go ahead and, and apply the teachings of Jesus to like every sphere of your life. And you practically do it. It's just like, well, Jesus would tell us to do this. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this. And every time the story of it is somehow cool of, of I mean, God gets the glory for it, but amazing things happen. People's lives are changed. And I want to unpack that because here on the podcast, we talk about all the time that we believe everybody was born on purpose and for a purpose. And so we're helping people awaken to that journey. But, uh, you know, and how many people never see why they, they were created. Right. Yeah. You yeah. Know? yeah. And can get caught up in, in, you know, desire for, for money, fame, power, prestige, whatever it can yeah. be. And, uh, and so I just want to unpack that. I'm so glad you're on the podcast. Yeah. Thank you. I have a high regard for you and everything that you're doing at the spiritual DNA team. And, you know, I really think that what you're doing is so needed uh, in today's world. And as I interact with humans every single day, I want to get them out of a position where they're not flourishing and into a position that God has called them into and yeah. where they need to be. So I love it, Ethan. So somebody might see your life now and go, well, that's great, Ethan. You, you've you got the businesses going and, and you've got this relationship, vibrant relationship with Jesus and you're, you're doing all this stuff. And, but you know, that's not a life that I could live because I didn't grow up in a in the, you know, perfect super Christian home like Ethan did and have all the advantages that Ethan did. Right. <laughs> but I'm guessing that's, that's not totally no. the story. Yeah. Yeah. I grew up in a, a broken uh, lower middle-class household in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And, you know, my parents got divorced at a very young age and I didn't really thrive in high school. Um, once my parents got divorced, really like the structure of my house was taken off. Um, and you know, when, when you go through something traumatic like that, you don't make the best decisions. So, you know, I guess drugs and alcohol were a part of my young adult life. And I really lived without boundaries, you know, and I, I, I ran from authority and I ran from structure and, you know, and then thankfully along the way, I met a Christian woman and saw her parents and I was like, why are these people happy? They don't have money and they're not drunk, it doesn't make any sense at all. And they happen to be Christian, mm -hmm. you know? And those are the same Christians that I made fun of in high school because I really didn't understand them, right. you know? Um, and eventually, I think it was the prayers of either her parents or her parents' parents that caused me to come to my knees and give up my the life that I was living uh, for Christ. And that was a transformative relationship for me. And um you know, I guess once you go through that, I, I went back to church and, um, you know, I remember speaking to the pastor and he's like, oh, don't worry, that, that excitement, that enthusiasm, that's going to wear off, you know, like 
just look forward to that. It's it's typical. <laughs> you know? That's what the pastor told you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, no, you're excited now, but go ahead, listen. It's, it's, it gets yeah, it's boring just, after this, right? It's like right? a two-week <laughs> thing, right? Like, it'll wear off eventually, and it hasn't worn off. You mm. know what I mean? And I don't know how you can carry this gift that God has given us and be okay with the broken state of the world and just go to church every week as a as a routine. You know, it just doesn't make sense. It still doesn't make sense to me, like... We are called, we are equipped, and it's a hurting and broken world out there. So what can we do mm-hmm. as children of God to help the hurting people who are out there? So I guess you're saying this was this was a new discovery because growing up, you this was not modeled for you at all. Well, no. I mean, I grew up, you know, just with greed and the love of money, right? I remember getting $50 for my birthday, and I would take my $50 to the bank, and I would get all singles, and then I would spread out my singles and I would get the iron and I would iron each single and I would stack it up and pile it out and fold it up. (laughs) Oh yeah. I mean, if if you say you loved money, like you love, no man, if you're going to do it, like, let's go, (laughs) let's just do it. Right. (laughs) So, and you know, and then I would go to a dollar and you know, I'd have a dollar and I go to the, you know, the penny candy store and I get like a hundred candy raisins. I mean, like that's wealth to an economy of a 10 year old. Right. Yeah. (laughs) So, Yeah. So, so anyhow, and yeah, and then like when my parents got divorced, it was like just ex- exasperated because I really felt like money and strength would keep me safe in a world where that was not safe. It wasn't okay, you know? Yeah. So, you know, so then I went to, I was a meat cutter because that was what paid really well. And I went through college because I knew there was something that would bring me more money and I got a degree in economics and finance. And then I figured, well, where can I learn about money? The bank, you know, they got lots of money. (laughs) So I got a job with the bank and I ended up doing like commercial audit and then liquidation work for the bank and ended up on this one transaction. I made the bank a million dollars that they didn't expect. And I got a free coffee mug and a $50 (laughs) gift certificate. Thanks, Ethan. We'll (laughs) take the million. Enjoy the coffee mug. Yeah, exactly. And the shareholder went price went up by three cents for how many, you know, I mean, many people. Um, so anyhow, I, and at that point in time, my brother got a book in real estate and it was like, Oh, okay, well this might be the next pathway to money. It's through real estate, you know? Um, well, one thing I want want to stop you real quick, Ethan. One thing I think is interesting is this is so often, I I believe that the seeds of who God has created us to be, that they're there from the moment that, that God creates us. Yeah. And, and they're present, whether or not we've given them to God to, to leverage for, for great good. Yeah. And two things I see in your story is before you even came into a connection with God, I believe that God, you talked about being really, really rebellious. And one thing that I've, I've you know, began to understand, I remember uh, a mentor of mine or a friend of mine had a mentor that told him, he said, hey, you know what? Um, he said, you're a rogue bee. And I'd never heard of it, this idea of a rogue bee. And for me, I've always struggled within the context of, of institutional church and any structure, I, I've never done well with it. And, um, and because I'm a, you know, an apostolic pioneering type of leader, much like you are, and I always thought I was a rebel. Yeah. And he said, he said, well, here's the deal with rogue bees. He said, in each hive, and I haven't studied this, I don't know if this is absolutely true, because <laughs> I, don't, I don't do a lot of beehive study, but I'm gonna take it on in this word, that in every hive, like 99% of, the, of, of bees or whatever are worker bees but each hive has like seven to nine or something rogue bees and their job is to leave the hive and go out and find the location of the next of where the hive will go next. Mm. And in that process, like seven of the nine die, like looking for the next hive, yeah. but the one that finds it and, and lives, like he creates the future of, of the hive. And he mm. said, his mentor said, listen, you're not a rebel, you're a rogue. Yeah. And, and that was freeing to me to not yeah. feel like that, all of some of that angst and, and you know, when it is immature and young in life and maybe you're bucket against the system, yeah. like it, that was the immature expression of it. But a lot of that is maybe that God had put that kind of entrepreneurial. Yeah, what a beautiful world. gifting. Yeah. Yeah. That the world doesn't recognize it or appreciate it. Yeah. They just see you as nonconformist and disobedient, you know? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but it's you, you, great you, wisdom, man. You're, you're a rogue. And I see that part about it is like, is in an immature, greedy, like non- redeemed by Christ's way, you you had a love for money. But what I see in your life now is that God has given you, I think there's an anointing on your life to make money. Mm. You've been gifted in business and what you do succeeds. And I think it's interesting to see that that, that rogue pioneering apostolic heart was there in, in your youth. 
And your love for money was just has now been redeemed of like, you don't love it as, as if it gives you identity and purpose, but, but you know how to make it, you're drawn to it. And now you're leveraging it to change and transform people's lives. Yeah. It's a tool that can be used for great good or great bad. It's really up to us to choose. Right. And I think, how do you break an addiction to greed? You break it with generosity, right? Like, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, I mean, that's just like the healthy work that you need to do if you're struggling with giving away money. And now we use a systematized and disciplined approach to give away money. And it's not just, you know, does somebody really need it or want it more than I do? And it's like, no, like, we give a percentage on everything that we make away and hopefully that percentage will increase and not decrease. And then we've been able to just cap our own personal spending to what's, what's normal and what's okay and not just disgusting. It's not our goal to elevate ourselves above those people that we love and interact with, you know, and I guess as we do accumulate wealth, we use it to share privilege. So, we have a condo on the ocean and we use that so that employees can have family vacations, not so that we can just go there and use it. Right. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. and when I get a text message that says my wife just walked in and is crying at how beautiful this place is like, that's, you know, if like Christ had a condo, he wouldn't just keep it for himself. I'm pretty sure, wow. <laughs> you know, so that that's an example. Even what I said during the intro was like, like Yes, what you just said is practically absolutely true. Like Jesus would have probably, well, he was on earth. But I mean, right now, maybe he would have a, <laughs> an awesome condo. And you're right. Like, what would he do? Like, hoard it, keep it, hide it, don't tell anybody, no one gets, no, he'd be like, oh yeah, you guys want to use it next week? No problem. But yeah. like, you just practically applied that and, and buy that. Like, but that's not normative. Most people, it's like, well, no, I, I worked hard. I paid for the condo. I'm not going to send your snotty nosed kids down to break something in it, right? <laughs> Well, you need to take your the eye out of the equation, right? If the Bible says lend freely, we have a 0% interest rate employee advance because the Bible says lend freely. Don't overthink it, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Love your neighbor as yourself. So if you want to get yourself something cool, that's great. Just make sure you give away as much as you spend on yourself. Then you're, mm. you know, then it feels okay and you're not ashamed of that, you know? So. I love it. Let, let, let's get back to the story. So you, your brother gets into some real estate. He gets a book of that. That begins going. Is that the the, the, tr- the track that took you into what became what's become now renewing management? Yeah. So we started with our home equity line of credit that we saved up um, $20,000 and we bought a double wide in Owensburg, Indiana and ended up rehabbing it myself. Me and my wife got in there and put on new sticky tiles and a little bit of paint and put in a new hot water heater and turned the gas on and then there was nine leaks in the gas line. So I called my brother and I'm like, Hey, what gives man? (laughs) You know, it stinks like gas in here. And he's like, well, did you put uh, pipe pipe tape on it? I'm like, what is that? He's like, well, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So I'm not well equipped at maintenance. You know what I mean? I'm just more of a spreadsheet guy, you know? And at that point in time, it was like, well, if we're going to make this thing happen, we're going to have to find people to do the work, you know, and then I was immediately attached to some people that had really gotten great relationship with, but they were addicted. They were using drugs at the time, opioids and heroin and stuff like that. And so, you know, I was like, man, I'm going to, you know, create economic models to help these people that I care about. Right. So I'll, I'll take Kenny to the BMV and I'll get him his license back and go in front of the judge and get him a new set of teeth and, you know, do all the things so that Kenny can succeed. But he didn't because the drugs and the devil took those things away faster than I could pour them out, you know? So at some point in the journey, I had to realize I am not God. I cannot play God. And without God, there is no lasting change. So thankfully, he brought me to my knees and said, let me go first. Let me be your Lord first, Mm. you know? And and then just follow me, right? And then everything is lasting and permanent and beautiful, and I don't matter anymore, right? Mm. I really don't. Three, four generations, nobody's going to remember me, you know? And what's my hope is that, you know, I can create a generational blessing so that all the glory just points to Christ. Mm. I love it, Ethan. So unpack a little bit, because you th- those are the beginnings, the genesis of 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 the heart behind what you've done with renewing management, but explain what is the company, Yeah. but your relationship with your employees, your, uh, the the kind of employees that you, that you look to, to bring in to, to 
to bless, to continue to walk. It's, it's very unique. So yeah. uh, unpack some of that for us. Yeah. So currently we're, we're a multifamily owner and operator. So we did the single family thing a couple hundred times and then eventually moved our way out of that single family market. In 08 and 09, we bet everything that we had in multifamily and praise God, because it was a scary time for single family operators. Mm-hmm. I remember, you know, the a friend and mentor of mine uh, was a real estate broker on the deal. And I really didn't trust anyone at that time. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember him calling me and he's like, I'm not sure why there were, you know, 12 offers on the property. Yours was number two or three. Uh, it was like $200,000 less than the top offer. And you don't have experience in this place, but the bank decided to award you the offer. So congratulations. <laughs> so, yeah. So it's just like, I, you know, what do I deserve, Darren? I deserve eternal uh, damnation and I deserve to be bankrupt. You know what I mean? So like, that's what I'm entitled to. That's what I deserve. So anything beyond that, you know, it's just like house money. You know what I mean? (laughs) God's blessing. Um, So, yeah. So now we're into multifamily between 80 and 300 units. We have uh, 17 communities across the state under contract, hopefully by the end of this week for 18, about 3,000 doors, 10,000 units or 10,000 heartbeats. If you look at how Mm -hmm. many humans are actually living at our community so yeah, renewing management, we've got like 108 employees. We're all over the state of Indiana and we hope to grow it from 18 to 40 within the next 10 years. And, and you talk about communities and, and that's really how you guys, that's that's your vision for it, right? This isn't like, like just people that live there and they're tenants or they pay the bills, but you're trying to develop communities in these communities. Yeah, it's all about relationships, right? Like God built us for relationships. And we've seen in our own family, like the the racial divides come tumbling down when you fall in love actually with somebody of a different race or a different socioeconomic background than you. Um, so the, the community that's closest to our home is Private Reserve on the north side of Indianapolis. And, you know, we've partnered with that community for years and got deep relationships with many of the residents and started community gardens there. And, you know, our church Mercy Road was intimately involved uh, with the youth there at the community. And we met as an outpost there, a private reserve for a couple of years. So, yeah, I mean, we want to focus on relationships. We want to focus on redemption. We want to focus on uh, emotional health, financial literacy. We just really want to you know, and it's not about us doing the work. All the gifts of the community already exist. Mm. So it's kind of like, how can, you know, if we agree that um, gifts are, are, are gifts are equally distributed, right? Like the humans living at private reserve have amazing gifts, right? But like privilege and resources, not. So how can we get behind their giftings and their callings and raise them up as leaders within their communities to do the work that God has called them to do? Yeah. You know, all the stuff is already there. It's just putting it together. And, and you've got a, the same kind of vision for, for your employees as well. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Uh, well, we love our employees. And, you know, I guess one part of our redemptive story is that we hire some people coming out of incarceration. Um, and those people are part of a reentry team that's led by John Gammon. Uh, John spent 18 years in prison and is, for me, a spiritual mentor. <laughs> you know, he follows Christ like very few people here on earth do and um, is a great inspiration to all the men and women who work uh, for our organization. Uh, you know, we also, we, you know, a lot of this is Christian based, right? But we're not a, a exclusively Christian organization, sure. right? right? So I have Muslim friends and atheist friends and friends who are all over the spectrum belief wise. And that's great, right? Like Christ has called us into the world. Yeah. And we're not huge on like judgment and hierarchy, right? Yeah. <laughs> so neither is Jesus. That works really well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And just to like, you know, yeah. So so anyhow, we have yeah, a hundred people and man, I uh I'm blessed to have them in my lives and they pour into me in ways that man, it's um hard to put into words. So here's uh, I've got a problem with it, Ethan. Is if I'm running a business and, and I, mean, I guess I am in some ways, yeah. but like, you know, you, you, you watch, you know, zip recruiter or whatever the commercial is going to be about finding new employees. And here's yeah. how you can find great employees. It's like most people, it's like, okay, I got to find somebody that 
you know, we got to check, make sure no criminal record, none of this, just squeaky clean, you know, squeaky clean. Let's check their Facebook, make sure they're not doing stupid stuff. And then if they're the best of the best of the best, then, we, you know, that's the kind of people we want. And that's who yeah. we'll hire. So that's like, fear-based leadership. Okay, and talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was afraid too, right? I mean, multifamily, there is criminal background checks. You really believe that, you know, if you do all your checks and that'll keep you safe and and, and, and honestly, it's the same thing as living in a gated community is in Carmel, right? Like if you live in the gated community, then you'll be away from all the bad things of the world. It changes when you fall in love with somebody who has a criminal record and you see the fact that they've lived a life behind bars and that they, their future shouldn't be determined by a bad decision. Darren, I've made bad decisions. Should my future be determined by those bad decisions? No, it shouldn't. So why don't we accept those people into our organization? Do turning our backs to problems stop problems from occurring, you know, in your own home? <laughs> you know what I mean? Ignoring no. it, yeah. does that make it go away? So if we ignore this whole segment of our population, do you think our bigger C community will be better? You know, do you think the gates around your nice house really protect you from anything? You know, you can still get leukemia. You can still die in a car accident. Guess what? You can get through the gate. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If the riots would have occurred in Car Carmel and Zionsville, you know, it, then what? You know what I mean? So, so I don't know. I don't believe in fear-based leadership. I believe that if we invite people into relationship with us, that um, they have the ability to to change their lives and to 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 do great things, right? And we want to be known as a sending organization. Um, so if somebody works for us for a period of time and then they go start their own business, like we'll even start finance that. You know what I mean? If you're called to be a truck driver, here's some startup funds to go drive a truck. You know, it's not, we need to keep everybody and make sure they never look anywhere else. I mean, we just want to bless all the humans that we interact with. And that's that. Wow. That that's a take home right there of, of just the difference of of like fear based leadership or faith based leadership of of embracing that God has a bigger plan for people that you want to believe in hope and what they can become because that's what, like you're saying that's what we'd want for ourselves and it just be, it, it makes me feel like it's got to feel like a much more expansive way to lead than trying to control and, and, and create almost like a scarcity mindset. Right. Yeah. And, and I, I know that's what people love being around you and what you guys are doing. And so one of the things I've, I've heard people talk about is, is seeing, and, and this might be a way to kind of encapsulate the way that, that you guys run your company is that is seeing business as mission, which I think is so key. Cause we have people on the podcast, maybe they're thinking, well, if I'm going to really do something for Jesus, I got to go like work in the church. Mm-hmm. And I know when I was growing up, one of the difficult parts for me to be able to trust Jesus was like, I want to be a drummer and be in music and, and influence the, the, the you know, musical artistic world. I don't want to go work in a, in a church, but I thought the only way you can really change the world is if you're in the sphere of like of society that's religion, which it, in my opinion is a total lie mm. because they're, we need people who are living their life on mission for Christ in every sphere of society. And yeah. so talk, talk a little bit about that being your philosophy, because you do, you are involved in your local church. You've helped launch Multiply Indiana, which is a movement to plant churches, uh, hundreds of them throughout the state of Indiana to make a difference. So, you know, you're very involved in church, but like, like why don't you just shut down the whole company and go just be like a, a missionary or just work inside, <laughs> yeah. you know, one small local church or something? Yeah, that's a great question. And I totally struggled with that question as well. You know, should I just be an executive pastor and do that for just Mercy Road or maybe a different church? And the answer is no. God has called me as an apostle and as a, uh, a pastor to these people that I'm shepherding. And there's no one else right now that he is called to be in that position. So, you know, I think about you know, revival in the marketplace. And I believe that that revival has already started. And I think that revival is something that Billy Graham even spoke about. And it's so needed because our marketplaces are desperate places. I mean, people, you know, people have used Jesus as like a marketing tool. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you know, buy for me because I'm a Christian and now I can take advantage of that and charge you more money. I mean, oh, you know, how, how gross is that to yeah. the world, yeah. you know? Yeah. 
Um, and, and I think like us as business leaders, we need to carry our faith with us wherever we go, you know, church on Sunday, work on Monday morning, all the interactions before and after work. Mm -hmm. It's just a, it's a 360 degree, seven day a week thing that God has called us into, you know? Mm. Um, so, so I don't know, I'm called to lead renewing management for right now. Um, and I'm breaking off into two different directions now with development and then, volumetric, uh, modular housing manufacturing, um, as this road rogue bee continues to fly out of yeah. the hive yeah. and figure out where, what's next. So right? tell, tell us about that. What's the new venture? Tell us about, about it and the heartbeat behind it. Yeah. Um, so that volumetric modular construction is basically just creating new homes in a factory environment. So we're going to take out all the inefficiency of new construction and put it into the factory. You know, the factory, it's never raining, never snowing. <laughs> yeah. We're going to break down the entire uh, construction process into simple, repeatable processes. Everything's going to have an instruction sheet with pictures and just step by step. This is how you do this particular um, phase of the assembly. We're going to buy the machinery and equipment required. We're going to start buying all the the parts wholesale that would go into a home and we believe that we'll be able to produce a better home at a more affordable price than anyone else here in the state. Mm. Um, we really want to target, we want to have people working for us that actually want to work. So we're going to target people coming out of addiction, homelessness and incarceration for part of our employee base. And then we're going to put equity back in the hands of some of our employees by offering them homes at or near cost. So you can, you know, the city of Indianapolis has 6,000 vacant lots. If we can sell somebody out of incarceration a brand new home for, let's say, $70,000 and they get the house for free and it costs them 15000 for water, sewer, and electrical connections, how beautiful would that be to make to have that person in a home for $425 a month, you know? Mm. I mean... It'd just be beautiful, and it would reverse uh, some of the generational uh, sins of the past as well. Um, so. Where did that idea come from, Ethan? <laughs> uh, well, I actually got invited to my friend Matt Crouch's um, dissertation at UND, and it was all about modular home manufacturing. It's like, man, that's brilliant. Why aren't we doing that, <laughs> you know? Um, so I went to that, and then I... Uh, Got, uh, I went to the uh, a lunch uh, with that John Gammon, my director of reentry. Uh, he had this lunch with all the people in Indianapolis who are coming out of incarceration, just a way for them to connect. And at that lunch, I got connected to G, who was friends with Mark, who um, is another partner. So Matt Crouch and Mark Young are partners on this volume odd, this new venture that we're creating. And, uh, yeah, so I guess that was it. We went to the, you know, got an invitation, showed up, and it's like, yeah, that's brilliant. We should do that, you know, and now it's just, you know, God's hand is all over it. Um, we're buying it from another Indiana firm, and, I'm, you know, I was doing the research on who actually owned it, and it's owned by Cross Properties, LLC. <laughs> and then, you know, it's like, okay, God, uh, that's a sign. That's legitimate. So do you, do you feel like, would it would it be correct to say you feel like God has led you into this opportunity? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, I, Darren, like just my own flesh, I'd be good for like eight houses, but, <laughs> you know, 3,000 units and new manufacturing opportunities, that's, that's not me. I'm just not genetically capable enough or gifted enough. This is just me me following the cloud that God has put in front of me and then just obediently following in the steps that he has laid out for me in my life, you know? So just step by step. But when this is successful, Ethan, you will develop a company that could employ and give a ton of people jobs. Yeah. You will have developed housing that could absolutely transform a family tree like generationally, this could be something that completely changes the life of someone. And when it comes back to, hey, I could have just bought another condo that I don't share with people in Florida yeah. and, and retired and been really, really happy. Like, but, but you didn't because you really do take seriously the mission that, that Christ has given us and his love has so transformed your life. But like, like I, I want people to hear like the kind, that kind of vision because like you're not some kind of special person. 
you're, you're a leader. You're a, uh, you're an apostle, right? You're no, you yeah. you. Have, but you have this. You have an ability to do business to make money, and you're just taking ideas that make sense and going. How could we actually help practically love and serve people in the process? Yeah. So I, you know, I'm to the point now where I could have all the earthly stuff that I I would want, you know, and I would end up in my basement isolated and all alone, and the the devil would be celebrating, right? Mm. Because I would be absolutely miserable without authentic relationship, without making a difference, without pursuing the call that God has placed on my heart, and and yeah, and that's not going to be my future, right? I, I'll I'll go to Christ and I'll ask him what what is it for 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 me today you know and then just be in neutral all day and wait for his prompting and his calling and then just pursue whatever avenue he puts in front of me I love it Ethan and it, let, let, let's wrap with this somebody's listening somebody's watching right now and and when we talked about being a rogue bee when we talked about you know that that entrepreneur and pioneering spirit they're like that's me and maybe they're at this this the starting place trying to figure out how do i live this life of of mission and adventure that ethan's talking about or maybe they they've done it they've got a company like yeah. you they run it and they're going you know I, he's right like i i bought another boat last year or something and now i gotta fix it and now i got yeah and, it, and it, <laughs> it, it just things keep not satisfying yeah what's a practical step somebody could take to begin that that next step of saying okay god what how do i really get in on the action yeah well, for the guy with the boat, I consider myself a, a venture capitalist for the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, how can you use the capital that you have for your good and his glory? Mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. all the idle, cap you know, there's so much idle capital right now. And who wants to be a lame fractional shareholder in some, you know, sugar producing company? You mm -hmm. know, it's like not that great. But there's entrepreneurs right now who need funding, who have been called by God to go out into the marketplace and to make a difference. So, man, I would love to connect with some of those people and share some of the stories that mm -hmm. uh, we have. And I'd love to put together a, a fund to fund micro enterprises through Nexus on the northwest side of Indianapolis. I mean, we would love to be a sending place for mm -hmm. entrepreneurs. And I think, you know, spiritually, man, fast, pray, read the Bible. You know what I mean? Uh, for me, fasting was a huge deal because I'm a, naturally a pleasure seeker. And I always thought that I deserve stuff. You know, mm -hmm. I deserve a great dinner. I worked hard today, you know, and, you know, after 40 days of all liquids, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, putting your flesh aside. Right. Mm -hmm. And I believe that the, 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 you know, God's fire falls on the altar of our obedience, you know, so if we can just put ourselves second and him first, I think he'll draw close to us during those times. And I think we'll hear from him and feel his presence in a new and different way. I love it, Ethan. I, I was so excited to have you on the podcast because I knew I'd be inspired personally, but I knew there was people that are that are regular listeners that needed to, to have their imagination expanded a little bit. And I find that so often as I believe that so many of us, we would we would do something more, we would take a greater risk, but we just, we, we, we suffer with a, a deficit of imagination. And people are free. Can we just say, like, if you have Christ, you are absolutely free, mm -hmm. you know? Like, I talk to my friends who spend decades behind bars, and they they got it more figured out than my buddy who makes 90 grand a year. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because they know what they truly have. If you have Christ in your heart, you're free. Why not acknowledge and walk in that freedom? You know, what is, you know, <laughs> how much money should it really take to live? You know, we have people who are on the wrong path because they can't take a $10,000 salary reduction. That's messed up, man. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. if you're stuck in a cubicle for 45 or 50 hours a year because of a $10,000 Delta, like give up the new car, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like just give it back, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And why can't we just say and encourage people to do that? But they're like, no, nah, we're trapped. We're trapped. You know, Disney's got to make five grand off of me this, this year because we got to go on vacation. You don't have to take that vacation. You can go to the beach. You can go for a walk. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you mm -hmm. can do some different things and it's going to be more fun than being trapped. So acknowledge and embrace the freedom that Christ has provided you and realize this isn't a dress rehearsal. Like yeah. this is it, man. Yeah. You know, we get one take. Yeah. It's important. Yeah. Yeah. 
I love it, Ethan. How can somebody be connected? Maybe they want to get connected to what you guys are doing at Nexus, Multiply Indiana, Renewing Management, the new company. What, how can they get connected to Ethan? Because <laughs> there's, there's, so there's so much. I know there's so much, but so you're gonna put it on the show notes. Right? Yeah, we, we are gonna put it on the show notes so you can click on there, but just say it so we have it on the audio as yeah. well. Yeah, uh, Renewing Management. Our website is where you matter. Where the letter you matter dot com. Um, Nexus is Impact Connected. Uh, dot com multiply indiana is multiply indiana dot com and i don't think volume mod has a website right, yet it's coming it's just an idea right now but yes. it's gonna get really real here in a couple months so ethan, <laughs> ethan i love talking with you i always have because you, you stir up so much of the pioneering and, and apostolic heart that i have and and i think one of the things that that inspires me so much is I've been saying some, I sometimes I'll go back and see when it, like an old sermon that I preached in like 2004 or something. And I'm like, I've been saying the same thing over it's and like, over and over again for over 20 years. Right. And, and I love it when I see somebody that like, I'm like, man, I really believe these things, but I don't know if everyone else really believes it. And I think what it is, it's just made sense to me as you're talking is like, the reason I love it is it's like, you're actually doing it. You're taking all these things that we that we say are so true about what it looks like to live a true adventure with, with Jesus, and you're just practically doing it. You're taking the <laughs> risk. You're stepping into it, and it's infectious. Uh, the, 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 you're, you, you truly are creating the future that is currently on the heart and the mind of God uh, because you've allowed him to, uh, to have your mind and your imagination and your gifts, and it's beautiful. Well, and thank you for the gift of spiritual DNA. You know, I went through that course. It was totally eye-opening. I've been a table leader twice. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a, you're a huge part of that journey, and maybe I'm, you know, it's like, well, maybe I'm not screwed up. Maybe this is just what God has called me to be, and Absolutely. then you just see that with person and person and person and person and person all around the table, you know, and it's like, yes, you too. This is what you're called to be. Just operating that calling. Honestly, being broke's not that bad. I've been there before. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's not that bad. People think, well, you know, having money is like all that great. But honestly, you know, running water, right? You know, we have food to eat here in America. The vast majority of us do. And we've got other humans. So, Take a risk, man, and run after what God has called you to be. So I love it. Ethan, we'll have you on again. We'll just have you on your regular time and time. We need just to get re-energized with vision <laughs> yeah, right. and, 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 and risk. Love it. Thanks so much, brother. All right. Thank you, Darren. And we're back. Although I don't have my sound effects here at the home studio. It's just not the same. You don't have the the, the you know, you don't have the, the the dream sequence chimes. It just doesn't feel like we went anywhere, but we did. Oh my gosh, Ethan just dropping bombs on us, guys. I mean, th th there's so many quotes. You need to go back and listen, just make some notes as far as everything that, that, that Ethan brought, right? Talking about falling in love with someone of a different race or a different social economic level, that as you fall in love with people, it changes the way you act, it changes the way that you, that you serve, it changes the way that you interact and the way you're motivated to bring love and to bring resource and bring privilege into the life. He talked about the gifts being, you know, equally you know, distributed, but privilege and resources are not. And if we lean into the idea of a, a faith-based leadership, not a fear-based leadership, we can actually begin to see people's generations of people's lives changed. That is creativity, spiritual, spiritually infused creativity. Uh, I love it so much. Um, I'd love to hear from you and what, what God said to you through this. Cause I really did. I prayed before this and believed that this could be a watershed episode for somebody that God is going to give you an idea. Like he's given Ethan to begin to create economic models that change people's lives. And why shouldn't that be the case? Why shouldn't the people of God, why shouldn't the, 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 the people following Jesus that, that created the world, why shouldn't they be the people that go forward and actually create the future that's on his mind? That's the only option. But you have to believe that. You have to embrace that. You have to be awakened to that and step into creating that. So two questions. Two questions is this. Here's the first question is what is God saying to you through this episode? What is God saying to you? And the second question is this, what are you going to do about it? What is God saying to you and what are you going to do about it? Those two questions should shape everything or can shape everything in your life.
as you were listening to that, what was God saying? What was stirring in your mind? What was stirring in your heart? What did you feel like you, that you were being drawn into? And what is God saying to you through that? And then what are you going to do about it? God doesn't inspire. God doesn't awaken. God doesn't speak to us just so we can write some stuff down in our journal and be like, oh, that was cool. That was neat to hear. No, it's action-based. It's momentum-based. The, the kingdom of God is forcefully advancing. It's forceful men and women that take hold of it. So what's God saying to you? What are you going to do about it? I've shared this story before here on the podcast, but I remember sitting down with lunch with my friend, Darren Campbell, great entrepreneurial leader, apostolic guy. And he said, Darren, he said, I want you to remember three things as you move forward to join God and creating the future. He said this, when you get excited about something that moves God's kingdom forward, so something that maybe today there's an idea, maybe it's something similar to what Ethan is doing, something stirred inside you and think, you know what, I could go after that. If I could embrace generosity, if I could begin to fall in love with people that are different than I am, if I could begin to embrace more of a faith-based leadership model, if I begin to ask God to give me creative ideas to utilize capitalism to actually bring Christ-centered, problem-solving industry. And that'd be really exciting if I could do X, Y, and Z. Here's what, what Darren Campbell told me. I love this. He said, if you're excited about something that's on God's heart and his mind, he is 10 times more excited about it than you are. And I want you to hear that as permission to go, permission to try, permission to fail. Like you're excited about it. Good, stoke that excitement and passion and go after it because God is just as excited. In fact, he's 10 times more excited than you are. He said, the second thing is this, that God will always stack the deck in your favor. I love there at the end of, of, the, of the interview when Ethan's talking about he met this guy and he met that guy. And all of a sudden, before you know it, he meets this guy that has this connection. And all of a sudden, the team is being put together right in front of his eyes more than he could ever ask or imagine that the deck is being stacked for them to create this new industry that's going to actually change right? Change the course of human history for, for, for hundreds of families. How is that not God's kingdom coming and his will being done on earth it, you know, as it is in heaven? It is. And God is excited. He will stack the deck in your favor if you will move out with faith-based, generous, creative leadership. And the last thing is this to remember, it's not about you. It's about him and about seeing his kingdom come in people's lives changed. And, um, Man, so good. I love doing this podcast and I love being able to, to bring people into your life that are going to help you think and dream and process and, and live differently because God has changed their perspective and their paradigm on, on their world. Um, if you got an idea, if God gave you a brainstorm, I want to hear about it. I want to pray for you. I want to get our team praying for you. I want you to reach out. Reach out to me at, at Darren at BlackbirdMission.com. Just email me there. Uh, hit me up on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, I'd love uh, to talk to you and to pray about it, maybe help you strategize how you could move forward in whatever idea God has given you because the future is going to be created by, by you. And I can't wait to be a part of the process with you. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Dinner Land Podcast. Um, if you don't know the unique ways that God has created you to create the future, uh, I want to encourage you, head over to spiritualdna.me, uh, buy the online course, go through it, uh, get help with our, with our online community, ask questions through the course, and um, begin that process of understanding and discovering who God's created you to be. It's probably step one in this process. I want to encourage you to do it. Appreciate you. Love you. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. And uh, until we talk to you again, never forget these three things. God is for you, not against you. God is near you, not far away from you. And God has created you on purpose and for purpose. Until next time, this is the Darren Early Wine Podcast. Mm -hmm.